Day two of Tick Week here at News Center, Maine. Mid to late July is when many ticks are at the point in their development where they're the most dangerous to humans and pets. They are at their nymph stage, no bigger than a poppy seed, so they can be harder to find, but they still can carry all of the diseases we have to watch out for. If you find an embedded tick, it's important to identify the species and see what diseases it may be carrying. And that's where a service just for Maine residents comes in. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee is here to tell us more about that. Hi, Viv. Hi, Pat. Researchers are reminding us to save any embedded tick that we find and send it in for testing. Now, that tick sample does not have to be placed in liquid or saved in alcohol or any other liquid. It can just be placed in a Ziploc baggie like this one. Make sure it's sealed before you drop it in the mail. Now, the main tick lab in Orno will identify the tick and for $15, test it for the pathogens that cause Lyme, anaplasmosis, and BB, I'm trying to get it out, but Babesiosis, the most common tick-borne infections. Griffin Dill manages the University of Maine Cooperative Extension Tick Lab in Orno, where things get busy after the mail arrives. These envelopes contain ticks sent in to be identified and tested. He says samples can be mailed in in a sealed Ziploc bag or in a vial containing alcohol, but never in bleach or acetone. Ticks have arrived here at the lab in other ways, too. We've received samples that have been uh, soaked in, in gin, in tequila, in you know, Vaseline, hand sanitizer, you name it. Maine has 16 different species of ticks. The lab receives between 15 to 100 samples a day. The majority are American dog or wood ticks and deer ticks. So this is an adult female uh, black-legged tick or, or deer tick. Dog ticks are larger than deer ticks and they also have a white or beige marking on their backs. Deer ticks are darker in color with black legs. Occasionally, the lab will receive a Lone Star tick, which has a distinct white spot. The species is not fully established in Maine, but exposure in some cases can cause meat allergies. Dill takes pictures and assigns each sample a number. Researchers prefer a whole or mostly intact specimen. Just a leg or just a tiny little piece of the body generally isn't enough to give a, you know, it's something we can still test, but it's really not gonna give us good information as to whether that tick is, is truly infected or not. Then the ticks, which are in vials, are pulverized in a special machine and then spun in a centrifuge. With the help of University of Maine student researchers, the tick samples are broken down even more, placed in a special solution and stored overnight. Then their genetic material is analyzed. Tom Roundsville is a molecular biologist that oversees the DNA lab. When we look for the genetic signatures of the disease-causing organisms for that particular panel that we're going to be running it for. Roundsville says ticks can carry and transmit multiple diseases at the same time. DNA material from deer ticks are tested for the bacteria that causes Lyme, anaplasmosis, and babesiosis, two common co-infections. Dog ticks are also tested because they can carry pathogens that cause Rocky Mountain spotted fever and other illnesses. These aren't necessarily things that are associated in Maine at the moment. They're all found in states that are nearby here. Besides ticks, the multi-million dollar lab handles pretty much samples of everything from droopy plants to infected fish. It also houses a veterinary diagnostic lab where staff perform necropsies and do diagnostic testing. So far this year, the tick lab has received more than 1,200 deer tick samples, nearly 38% tested positive for Lyme. People sending in ticks can also complete a survey, which gives researchers more data they need, like where the tick encounter took place and what activity people were doing when it happened. The tick report and the data covering all 16 counties is available on the main tick lab website. Now, Dill says people who send in tick samples are notified about the results by email, but they say in no way should these tick testing results be considered a medical diagnosis, and you should always consult your doctor after receiving a tick bite. Now, coming up tomorrow on day three of Tick Week, there is new research on the bacteria that causes Lyme showing how it can go from a bite to your brain. Pretty interesting stuff, and we'll have more on that tomorrow. I'm reporting live from South Portland, News Center Maine's Vivian Lee.